Over the past few videos, we have been learning how to analyze business transactions. This is the first step in the accounting cycle and helps us understand the different elements of a transaction and prepares us to record those in a journal, which is the next step in the accounting cycle. Now, recording a transaction in a journal is typically known as making a journal entry or journalizing a transaction. Now, before we learn how to journalize a transaction, let's review quickly what the steps are to analyzing the accounting transactions. Basically, anytime you analyze a, an accounting transaction, you're going to be asking six basic questions. The first one is, what are the two sides of the transaction? Every transaction has a benefit and a sacrifice. The next question is, what accounts are represented by each of those sides? And then, where are those accounts on the accounting equation? Once we understand that, we can decide whether those accounts are increasing that side of the accounting equation or decreasing it. From there, we'll understand whether or not those increases need to be a debit or a credit. And finally, we can look at the total debits and total credits and ask, do they tie? Meaning, do they equal each other? These six questions are essential to being able to understand a transaction well enough that you can enter it as a journal entry. Now, I know that debits and credits is probably the most complex piece of these analysis questions, and it's something you're probably still wrapping your head around. So be sure to look at the worksheet that we created in the previous video. This worksheet will help you to be able to determine debits and credits based on the other analysis questions. So now that we've reviewed the steps to analyzing a transaction, let's walk through each of those and show how they flow into creating a journal entry. Let's imagine that on January 5th, the owner of the company invested $1,000 in cash into the business. The first step in analyzing the transaction was to identify the two sides. And we know that the two sides to this transaction are that the owner invested and that there was cash. Each of these has an account associated with it cash, and in this case, capital, because capital is where an owner invests his money. Now, cash in this scenario is increasing, and cash when it increases is a debit. So we are going to debit cash for $1,000. Capital is also increasing, and so we will credit capital for $1,000. Now, let's look at another transaction while we're here. Let's imagine that on January 12th, the company paid rent for $1,500 in cash. The two parts to this transaction are rent on one side and cash on the other. Now rent is considered an expense account and we don't have it up here on our example. So let's add another T account for rent expense. And expenses we know when they increase are a debit, so we would debit rent for $1,500 and cash, since it's decreasing, would be credited for $1,500. So now we've walked through the analysis process for each of these two transactions. We are now ready to move to step two and record these as journal entries. When we think about journals, we usually think about these small written records of daily events in our lives. And for us, those are usually written in words. In a business, remember that accounting is the language of business. Everything in accounting is written in numbers, but the concept is still the same. A journal is simply a chronological record of daily financial transactions and activities in a business. The most common type of journal that we find in accounting is called a general journal. General journals are where pretty much every transaction is recorded. And again, the important thing is that they are recorded in chronological order by date, just like a journal would be in real life. Journals in accounting have a very specific format. Most of them look something like this. You will have individual rows where you can record your journal entries. Those rows are typically numbered to help us identify the location of specific transactions, which will become important later on. They will have a place to record the specific date of the transaction, the accounts associated with them, and the debits and credits. This is why the analysis process before you record a journal entry is so important. If we already understand what the accounts are and the debits and credits associated with them, the recording of a transaction in a journal is very simple. Let's review those two transactions we were looking at earlier. The first transaction we had was on January 5th, the owner invested $1,000 in cash into the business. 
So let's start by recording the date of this transaction. On row one, we would record the date, and oftentimes we record the date in a short format with simply the month, slash, and day in numbers. Also note that the date is only recorded on the first line of each transaction. Subsequent lines don't need the date recorded and actually help us to break up the transaction so that you can easily start see where one starts and the other stops. The next part of the transaction is to record the two accounts. Now, although technically it doesn't really matter which account goes on top, traditionally accountants always put the debit accounts first followed by the credit accounts. So we'll follow that same format here, beginning with our debit account, which was cash in this transaction and then our credit account, which was capital. Now, for the dollar amounts, we have these two categories that we can put them in. And as you can see, this whole section, if you think about it, looks very much like the T account we were using in the past, with the debits on the left side and the credits on the right. So for each account, if it is a debit number, we are going to put it on the left or debit side. If it is a credit number, we are going to put it on the right or credit side. So cash was a debit number, so we would put $1,000 in cash on the left side. Capital was a credit number, so on the capital line, or row two, we would put the $1,000 on the credit side. So as you can see, as long as you're comfortable with the T accounts and you've learned how to analyze the transactions, this entire transaction was pretty much written for us already when we finished the analysis process. All we had to do was put the important pieces into the format for the journal so that it could be officially recorded into our accounting records. Now let's look at the second transaction. On January 12th, the company paid rent for $1,500 in cash. Once again, we will start with the date. The next available row is row 3, so we will write the date in row 3, again in a short format, so month slash day. Then we begin with the accounts. Which account goes first, rent or cash? Because rent is our debit account in this case, it's going to be the first one, because again, we always put our debit accounts on top and then the, ca the credit accounts afterwards. So let's add rent expense as our debit account, and then the $1,500 debit to rent would go in the debit category on the left. Then we would record our credit account of cash with its credit amount, $1,500, on the right-hand side. By putting the debits and credits on separate sides, it helps us to quickly and easily identify what are the debit numbers and what are the credit numbers, and ensure as we're looking at it that our debit and credit numbers equal. So although the formatting for a journal is fairly simple, each piece of it is very important. Oftentimes in a business, you have multiple different accountants recording entries into a general journal, and we want to make sure that each one understands what the other accountant has done. So we always follow a very specific formatting with the debit accounts on top, debit numbers on the left, credit numbers on the right, and the date only on the first line of each transaction. If we each record general journal entries the same way every time, it makes it very easy for any accountant to step in and understand the work that was done before them. To learn more about entering journal entries and other accounting topics, check out more of my videos on YouTube or visit ToriNorman.com.